Greetings, everyone. Right, we got a situation. So you see that empty parking spot there? That's where I am right now. All I did was reverse back, stopped, and then came back to the car about six hours later, turned it on, well, tried to turn it on, and then we have, we have a no crank, no start situation. Okay, so I got the clutch pushed down, nothing, right? No crank, no start. So let's see if we can fix it. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be pretty simple. Well, never mind that. Nothing simple with cars. But let's just see what we can find out. So my first hunch is to look and see. My first hunch is to see if the down here portion of the clutch signal came out. So, so there is uh, up underneath there. It's a little tiny tab for a clutch pedal signal. Hmm, let me see. I gotta get a light. Let's take a look at this together. So you can see already, right? The uh, right there is the clutch pedal not pressed. It's not even in contact with that clutch pedal switch. So push it away. Bring it back. It doesn't even touch it. So I don't know how long that's been like that. So let's start with that. See what see what's going on with that. Should that means it should already just already be available because it's not being pressed. So I don't know why it wouldn't just start. Take a look at this. Switch and see if we can test it or see what's going on. Let me talk about what I've been doing. I'm gonna reach I'm gonna reach my hand. And then eat there because I'm tall enough, right? If you're short, you're gonna have a problem doing this. Reaching my hand underneath there. Grabbing the, the, the part of the clutch switch. Nothing. Alright, so I got it open, on, off. Oh, what's up, dude? And I can't get it to uh, start. No, can't get it to start, yeah. I know, always something. So I can't get it to start, so I'm, I'm a little stuck right now. I gotta see what, see if that circuit's closed or not. We'll go right to the starter. Maybe we'll go right to the starter. Kind of like want to test the starter by bypassing everything. I'm just going right to the starter to see if we have a functional starter. So we gotta get some stuff out of the way. Let's kind of flip this up. Give us a little bit more room. The starter is right here. All right, so show you something inside the car. Right. So you want to make sure the car is in neutral. And the head brakes all the way out. The reason why you do that is because if the car lunges forwards, it won't. I mean, sorry, it'll stop the car, prevent the car from lunging forwards because it's in neutral. Talk about the goals here. So on the starter, there are three wires, right? So we have this big one here. It's going to be positive from the battery. The smaller one here is going to be signal. So we just kind of pull that out. Looks like that. Okay. Pull that to the side. Then we need to get this off because this is uh, a little boot on top of this. So we can get that off. We'll get that off one second. Try to get that off. What I had to do was uh, come in with uh, this and just kind of like push it, uh, push that cover off. I used this thing here. Trim removal tool. So now that bolt, that stud is exposed. See that larger stud there? 
All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect. I'm going to use a jumper cable from... from See that? So I'm gonna go from here. What's this? Get that stupid thing out of the way. There you go. Couldn't read it anyway. It's pretty much useless. Okay, so I'm gonna go from here. Right, that stud there to the signal wire, which is right here. Get a wire and cross those two over and see what happens. The starter should turn. So I'm using this wire with an alligator clip on both sides. I made this myself. You can buy them or make them, doesn't matter. All right, I'm gonna clip one onto that smaller wire in the middle of those two bolts. And this one on the, uh, I'm gonna touch it real quick with the power on the uh, starter itself. So all this test is going to tell us is if uh, the starter can actually, um, you know, shoot out. I don't, it doesn't give us a definitive answer on the state of the, the solenoid, but it's a good place to go. So, connect to there. Okay. Good starter. So something else is going on. That's a good sign. It's also annoying. So I don't know if we have a. Okay. Another thing too you want to do is uh, check the battery. You know. So I already knew the battery was fine because I can tell from the behavior of the horn, the, the windows, and the lights. But you want to just check and see if you're cable is loose or you know, they're not so we're good there so we got a good starter we know that the clutch um, what if the clutch switch could have failed something's preventing it from getting a signal you know what? let's look at the uh, wiring diagram and see what fuses are in place for the starter you know? Yeah. Let's, let's see that, because we have a fuse box here. We have a fuse box, fuse box underneath. Let's just check and see if all those fuses are, um, and relays are in place, are, are functional. Basically, there's this website, right, called uh, Fuse Box Info. Right? And I'll put the description on the video itself. Right? And you want to go there because it gives you a little bit of a hint of what fuse boxes, where they're located, and what the fuses do. So I already looked this over. On the interior, right, there is a fuse number, position number 31. It's a 7.5 amp, and it's a starter signal right here. Right. I'll show it to you uh, on, your, on the screen. So we got to go over there by the driver's side, kick panel, and just pull off the cover, and then the fuse box will be there for that fuse and see if it's uh, if it's intact. There's no fuse on the outside fuse box that has anything to do with, at least not directly that I'm aware of. So let's go ahead and grab that fuse and take a look. I'm showing it to you this way instead of looking at the wiring diagram, just in case you're like a DIYer and you are, you know, trying to figure this out yourself, you know, and you don't have a lot of like access to uh, all data or you don't want to buy it. Just you should, it's not that expensive. Let's try to get you the best view possible. Okay, great. I think that's enough light. Um, so the bottom right here is numbered. So it's like, you know, 12, uh, 17, 18, 19, on and on. And up top here, you have some other numbers, right? It looks like the one I want is position 31, so it's going to be this one right here. And that's going to be 
the 7.5 that they're talking about. So I had to pull that one out. Can't do it with one hand. I'll check the integrity. I'm not sure what you can see, but this fuse is intact. So we have no issues here. Uh, okay, so now we need to check and see if we are able to get power from... Let's see, can the... Do we have an ignition problem? That's a possibility, but I'm not really sure. You know, you always want to try to check the simplest things, the easiest things first. So, right, let me think about this for a second. I'm on all data, DIY.com. And uh, I've got this uh, set up for an 87. And this is, let's look at this, right? So here's our starter. Okay. And we can see here that from the battery comes down right directly to it from the positive, we're good. We know that the starter runs because we just jumped it, right? So we know it has power. We don't need to check the under hood fuse relay box. That doesn't make any sense because we have power going to it, right? So, this here, number 42, is a 40 amp fuse, white and black. And then it does a connection, and then it goes to white, and then it goes to the ignition switch, right? Which is the battery part, right there. So, what I was thinking is, uh, Splitting this in half, right? Because I just was... I don't really care if there's battery power getting to there yet. If I can split it in half, right? Which would be, like, which would be right here. By the starter cut relay. Right? I can figure out if there's a problem from this side. Or I have to go back to here and test that, right? The issue is... This starter cut relay is... I'm having a little hard time finding it, so... I'm digging around, trying to find it. If I can find it right, I'll be able to do a couple of tests. I can check for continuity when I clutch the switch to ground. And then I'll be able to also check the... see if it's getting power from the uh, black and white. You know what I mean? So, it's over here driver's side. I have to remove this cover to get to it, but I don't know. We'll see because it's a little tricky right now to try to figure out where it's at. So I dug a little deeper. I think it's over here on this side. And uh, so we have, I think I'm going to unscrew that here just to kind of get this a little loose. And there's another screw right here. So this is what it looks like. So let's pop those out and uh, there's another screw here. They're all Phillips. Let's see if we can kind of like get some space so we can kind of see what's going on. See, my concern is this aftermarket shenanigans right here. But whatever. Alright, so pull these three screws out. All the same. One's black like me. That was all the way over there. So I'm just gonna try to weasel this down. I don't really know how. Okay, we're good. Okay, it's not too bad. Okay. So, we got a whole bunch of connectors back here. The mirror. This is the aftermarket. Oh boy, what the hell. Sorry about that. You didn't see anything, because I zoomed in like a champ. Okay. So I just kind of pulled this down. As you can see, and uh, I can get now I have access to uh, back here. I was saying, like, we have this connector here, you get this aftermarket uh, Viper, which I need to disarm at some point. I need to take this out of the system, but now, now we can see stuff. What is that? Is that the Viper? I don't know what the heck that is. Okay. 
Either way, we gotta figure out where this freaking connector is. Right, so I pull this down because I really need to get this out of the way for diagnostics, but you can see all the Viper shenanigans that are attached. This box is uh, definitely uh, protected by Viper, but at this point it's just annoying me by Viper. And uh, we are, you know, I just want to get this kind of like out of the way so I can maneuver. So it's, I'm just going to unscrew that. There. Yeah, get that, that washer, put that over there, pop this out. So now I can get more free play. So I can move this out of the way. Don't break that wire. Could just cut those and make them longer, but we're gonna do that. So now we get a much better view underneath here. I do not know what I'm looking at. I thought initially one of these would be the uh, relay right here. I don't know. I could look up the part number also, you know. The uh, basically what I'm having here is an uh, issue with like information accuracy. Oh. Yeah, I just don't know. Am I getting what I need? Could be one of those. Right there. You know? Or it could be this right here. But I do not know, so I'm gonna think about it for a second. And I'm looking for four wires. Oh. Anyway, it's easier to work with now. All right, so I found it, right? Look at I found the, the component, starter cut relay. And I'm looking for a black and white wire to come in onto it, right? The starter cut relay is, um, is here. You'll see it when it's, uh, it's that thing that's like attached to the body, so. That's for manual transmission, just so you know. And uh, if I, thinking if I go there, pull that off, right? Pull off the connector, I can look at the black and white wire and turn the key on and see if I get any power going to that when I put the key in the on position. So this is our starter cut relay right here. Right, let's see if we're getting power to it. So we got to disconnect, disconnect this connector from it right here. Okay, so this plug was a bit of a pain in the butt to get off, right? So you just push down on that. So I took a uh, screwdriver and I just pushed in like that to get that to release. And then I was able to slide the plug out from the uh, starter cut relay. Now here's the thing, alright? It's a black and white wire I'm looking for, but there's two of them. See? There's one there. And there is another one right there. So, and I have a black and red, and I have a blue with white on it. So I don't know which one. I know both both the black and white are at the top, so that's the top being, you know, relative, but these two right here, black and white, so one of them should engage this relay. Now the thing is, I could just, just test the relay, but anyway, let's just see if we're getting power to one of those two, yeah? Alright, when I turn the key on. So I got my test light out, right? I have connected my test light to the door jam right here. We know that these two top here will will light up if the car has power coming, if the ignition is sending power to it, right? So, jam that in there. Look right here. So you have 12 volts there and 12 volts here. So, we know that we're getting power all the way to right here, right? So that means we have this solenoid left to check. Pardon me. 
Perfect. I think you can see that. Yeah, I think you did. So that's... We get some resistance along the circuit. So this one's 12 and this one's... Um... 11.9. So we know we're getting power to there, right? We now know that the circuit from here to the ignition is fine. So we don't need to worry about testing any of that, right? It's from the... It's from the... The solenoid here out to the starter is what we need to figure out if there's power going through there, right? So this should change position if it's get power, if it's powered up or not, right? So let's test this solenoid right here. So we're going to pull it off and uh, run a test on it. All right, so we're going to go right onto this. I already broke it loose so I can... Pretend I'm really good at doing stuff one-handed. Or, well, I do do stuff one-handed, but that's for another type of DVD with adults in mind. Okay, so that's that. All right. So this is what we want. This is your starter cut solenoid. And that's your part number right there, zero. Zero five six seven zero zero eight five seven zero. It's a 12-volt made in Japan by Densil. Um, so we're gonna listen for this to. This is this this is a a naturally its state is open, so the circuit's open. When it gets energized, it closes. So we are going to listen for that closing to occur, and then we'll know for sure that. Uh, if this is the uh, culprit or not. And then we can continue down from here to the circuit of the uh, actual um, starter. Like I said, I don't really know why it would have failed, but we're chipping away at it. Okay, we know we're, we're moving in the right direction, okay? But to make my life a little easier, right, I just placed uh, the uh, alligator clip here, a black one, onto the black lead of the... Uh, the actual uh, multimeter and uh, it's set for check resistance right so if you look right here right so this is the orientation of the uh, of the um, remember the two black wires were up top so those two black wires there so look we have 59 yo yo what's up we got 59.8 ohms of resistance between these two and then everything else is an open circuit All right. so only between these two we have some some sort of a connection All right so what that tells me right is that I don't really know this could be high for resistance I'm unsure All right but I do know that this is, we need to energize one of these two legs, I'm sorry, maybe energize this leg and that leg, we have to figure it out, you know what I mean? And just to see if we hear any clicking sounds, but we know that if it clicks, all right, these two right here, on the on where the red is touching, will close. And if those two never close, then we know for sure that this is our point of failure. Okay. So again, we're just checking to see if this relay is functional. And uh, I'm not really sure of the values. So, I'm trying to get you into the action here. Okay. So here's our battery, right? Positive. Here's a connector. Here's our alligator clips, right? that down. So here's our orientation again. Those two black wires are up the top. Right? And when we place power, we should energize we energize both sides. Listen. Listen closely. You'll hear the uh, you'll hear it close. Oh, that came loose. 
So let's uh, listen. So the relay is functional, right? Okay. So let's just finalize this test, right? And go like that. All right. If everything is good, we're in we have the multimeter in continuity. So oh boy. <sighs> Come on. So like that. That's the setting we have it on. And continuity. I'm gonna see if the circuit's closed. Alright, so if it's closed, we should have yeah, so we'll go here, like this. And I want you to look at the multimeter. So we have continuity. So we have a, like 0.9 ohms. So this circuit's opening and closing. Okay. Pull that off. You can see we'll go back to an open circuit. Okay, so this relay is functional. Um, we, I'm going to put it back, just plug it back in and see if I can hear a clicking sound when I, when I turn the key. You know, all right, so we're trying to listen to see, we got this plug back in, see if we are, if we can hear anything. See, I don't hear anything. You know what I mean? Nothing. I don't hear it clicking at all. I'm not really sure why. <sighs> Alright. Okay, so this is what I think, right? I'm going to try to jump this. So let's talk about it. So we know, right, that this slides into there like that, right? We know that those two right there are... I'm sorry. Can you see? Sorry. These two here on the left, or sorry, this left side, right, close. When we energize these two, these two close, right? So to me, if I we know that these two right here get power when we turn the key on, right? The wires coming in both have 12 volts right here. So I'm thinking if I feed 12 volts to this, these two, because these are the two that open and close, and I turn the key on, I should be able to if everything is fine with the wire and the circuit all the way to the starter and the solenoid and the starter is fine, I'll be able to start the, start the starter and then this would definitely be the problem, right? So that's what I'm thinking. All right, so follow me. Follow this logic. It might be good, it might be bad. I'm not really sure. So again, here we go, right? So we know that this here, these two, Dear Lord, hope it doesn't kill him. A car. Go from there to there. Like that. Right? And it's a neutral. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Alright, good. Don't do anything crazy. Alright, so what do we... We just narrowed it down. This is the problem right here. Damn it. All right, I don't want to get any cheap parts, but. Cool, well, this is our failure point, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Hey. All right, so, got a little excited. I can make a, just lost my virginity. But anyway, I'm so wrong. I think I know why. You ready? So this is what's happening. Let's, let's talk about what we mean, right? Okay, right here, right, is, let's zoom in a little. Okay, this is our starter cut relay, right? And it has four wires. Wire one, 
wire two. Right? Those two are the two wires at the top. They share a common wire, which is why they're black and white and they're both hot at the same time when you turn the key on, the ignition right here. We're good? Everything good so far? Okay. So, you know, right, that I'm looking for this clutch interlock switch, which I thought I found, but it's not. This switch is actually for the cruise control to let the computer know when the brake, when the, when the clutch pedal is, 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 uh, has returned back all the way, right? So when it's pushed off, it tells it like, okay, you're, you're driving and it's now, this circuit is in a, I don't know if it's, I guess it would be closed. So now it knows I can go ahead and set the speed. And then when you set the speed and you take your foot off the clutch, it knows like, okay, I'm waiting for, so basically it's an on and off uh, situation, you know? It, it knows its position based upon the switch, right? And then the computer says, okay, switch is in this position. If in this position, allow to set speed. If not, don't allow. So I've been in, enable, disabled, sorry, from setting this speed in the, on the uh, cruise control for, for months. It just, years, I'm sorry. It just happened out of nowhere. And I was like, man, I gotta get around to fixing that. But that's what we just discovered. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna fix my my cruise control issues, right? Second, the, the, the clutch interlock switch is up higher on the, um, on the actual, um, uh, on the actual, uh, pedal itself. And I'm, this is what I think we can do to, to test this, right? You see right here, it goes to ground. We know we have no ground issues because the car runs, right? Everything functions as it's supposed to, right? So basically all I did, I taught you to steal your Honda. That's all I did by, 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 uh, by taking, uh, a, a paper clip here and bridging these two. That's all I did. I taught you how to bypass the interlock. That's all I did. Okay? Sounds good? Alright, good. Now, what needs to happen, right, is that I'm guaranteeing you, right, because remember we tested, that, that we tested this right here. This see the four pins, right? So let's set it up, right? So, this is this, the, the two top here are the hot wires. That's these one and two, right? And then this relay here, the it's uh, when so the part here that closes the one and three right, is right here. These two on the on the left side, right there. Okay. So when those two close, and we you know we tested it. Bench tested with the nine volt battery and it closed. It sounded like a good, and I, I tested the continuity and it was fine, right? So I was over, overjoyed. I have had moments when uh, relays have had the capacity to open and close, but they didn't work. So I'm pretty sure that I was so sure this was broke, right? I thought about it some more. No, it sounds too good. I tested continuity. I don't believe that this is the issue. So we're gonna rule this out. I'm guaranteeing it's gonna start. Ready? Wait, put your, your money on it. But this is what I know now, right? Just from thinking about it and realizing that I, I was looking at the wrong switch. That's what that's what threw me off. So now I know where that switch is, right? We can go like this. We can manually open and close by pushing the clutch pedal, right? First off, we're gonna check and see if it if it's still attached to the clutch pedal. Right? If it's still attached to the clutch pedal, like nothing broke off, right? Then this manually open and closing it. We can go ahead and go to position number four, right? Which is going to be the blue and black wire that comes into that uh, starter clutch relay. And we can check for, for continuity to the body. And we should see continuity go from open to close if the switch is still functional. And then we can jump it right here. We can jump this uh, connector right here that goes into the clutch interlock switch and I guarantee you we'll be able to start the car also. So let's go ahead and set this this test up just to rule out the starter cut relay and narrow it down to the, because again, you can't just, 
I would just be throwing parts at it and I'm gonna fail, I already know that, without testing the, the clutch interlock switch itself for functionality. And then the, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to just pull that switch off the pedal, off the clutch pedal, uh, that's another issue when we get to it. But to test it, we don't need to pull it off, so let's go ahead and do that, okay? I want to start with this macro view so you don't get too confused because I know I've watched many videos, tutorial videos that don't really do a good job of helping the viewers know what's going on with orientation. Alright, so here we go. Orientation of fighting chance. This is hard to film, by the way. Pedals in the way. Okay, alright, this, this, this is the clutch pedal, by the way. Alright, so right here is the cruise control switch sorry the cruise control switch okay so that hasn't touched hasn't de been depressed in in a long time okay because it just doesn't touch the pedal anymore but up here right this right here that is the switch that we want this is the clutch control switch right so when this And this is getting close here. And this is pressed in. And this is pressed. And this is pedal is pressed in. Right? It pushes against this. So the top part of the pivot pushes against this and then closes the circuit. And to get this pedal off, right, you gotta unscrew. They to get this cotter pin out. That nut. There's another one back here. I think there might be... An, yeah, and there's another one up top here. So it's a little tight. A little pain in the butt. Not really fun. So this is what we have to do. We have to test. Check and see if that's still touching. I can't see it if you're there. Oh, I just fell down. I can't see it if you're here. But I need to double check it. Not a good situation. That would be why it failed. See that? Because that needs to push against this. I'm, I'm guessing. Well, no. Let's just go. Let's see what we get. This is where it commonly fails. It just doesn't seem to be able to um, push against the pedal. All right. So I need to create some space to work to get to those things. So there's two. over here looks like this the other one I gotta go fight and try to find that fell down there that sucks okay so I'm thinking we can kind of slide this a little out of the way like that just to give me a little bit more room so I can see what's happening and I can Plug the uh, connectors. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to show you. Um, see the power distribution here is loose, right? And these are the two clips. This yellow one is the one for the clutch uh, release lock. Uh, yeah, you know the one that checks to see if the clutch pedal's depressed for the ignition. You see, I just jumped it with a paper clip. And then this is the one for the cruise control. We'll leave that out. We don't really care about that. Okay, so since this is loose now, right, you can see that bolt there. We're going to get that out of the way. And then over here, there's another screw over there. And we have the uh, pin. Uh, we're going to get that out and then we have that screw. And I want to do all that to get this pedal out and then we can kind of fix the problem. So if this car works, right, as it starts. So look, remember this, this is still disconnected. This, I'm gonna put this back. And I guarantee you, 
and this is gonna start right now with this jumped all right so got that let's get the key all right make sure we're in neutral so don't forget make sure you're neutral what did i say make sure you're neutral all right Handbrake up, and neutral, handbrake up. Right. See, I don't even need to put my foot on the clutch because remember, it's already jumped. See? There you go. So that relay is fine. The problem has been isolated to there. That's the only thing left that could fail. And, uh, I just wanted to do that so you can kind of see. So there's two places to bypass the uh, the entire process, the ignition process. Um, I do not recommend you keep paper clips in place as a solution for these uh, problems because um, uh, they're introducing a constant open circuit, and uh, you never know if a short can occur and uh, it will cause like some situation where something overheats and then uh, catches your car on fire. So do not use paper clips as permanent solutions. Uh, only use them for testing purposes. So we got this cotter pin here. Straighten it up. I'm gonna try to pull it out. I'm going to show you the setup I have to use to get this, this bolt out here. So, I have a whole bunch of extensions on there. A little swivelly head, 12 millimeter, so it looks like this. This is what I had to do to get that one out. And this one's pretty, pretty straightforward. So, alrighty. Got it loose so we can at least see some of the action. That's that. Those are 12 millimeters. Right, and there's another one here. And there's another one up top there. So, right here, we gotta kind of poke this out of the way. Good. Okay, so I poked it out. Yeah, fine. Oh, it's right here. Okay. So that's what that looks like. Okay, so that's the one that was at the very, very top. Oh my gosh, my cat's. The cat that I've fallen in love with is now harassing me for food. She'll probably, she'll probably jump up here. Come on. There you go. See, that's, we are close like that, aren't we? Just hop in my car, tell me that you want some food. Yeah, you. How come somebody hasn't loved on you and moved you into their house yet? Hmm? Yeah. Oh, this cat really loves me. And, uh, I'm making a video. You gonna, you gonna let me make this video? Don't get ran over by a car. I don't want to start crying today. All right, so we got everything loose. Well, let's see if we can kind of pull this down. I've been summoned for food. So I'm going to kind of push this through here. Let's see. Feels like it's going to be hanged up on something. This through. Uh, loosening the uh, power distribution really helped a lot. Uh, Alright, so 
little struggle with it. Oh. <laughs> Messing with my video. I'm gonna feed you. Okay? Just give me a second. Thanks. So the um this is our prize. This is a pain in the butt. But we did it. See right there is that top screw, the last one we took off. That's the hard one to get to the left, and then we have the hard one lower. This is easier on our right side, but that's our switch, right? I want it. <laughs> Look at this. Stuff's just crumbling. These things. So often, right, it is recommended if you find failure in the clutch pedal switch or the power, not, not this one, or the brake. The brake has the same thing like this, right? You should check both of them, repair both of them at the same time. Well, last year, as in last year, uh, the uh, brake one failed, and I didn't even bother to follow up and check this one. And now here we are, a year later, and the clutch failed. And we have a no crank, no start situation. So now we're gonna test this to see if it functions. And if you look inside of here, you can see that Side of here, all right. Get ourselves a little pointer tool. All right, you can see here right, that this needs to push against that, and there's no, and there's nothing left to push against it. So that's why we have no crank, no start situation. Oops. That's, that's that. Pedal push down. And it's just wide open like that. So we need to pull all this apart and attach something to the pedal just to help it push down. It really loves me. Just hanging on top of the car. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. This is how we're going to bench test this, right? We got our multimeter set to resistance test. Right? And I want you to see what I've done here. I've got the red, the red lead. Just use an alligator clip to connect it. It helps it easy. Helps it makes it easier for me to hold on to. Okay. I want you to look at this screen here if you can. Okay. Let's see. Is it still, can you still see? Mm. All right, do our best. All right, just a second. Ugh, you're so demanding, one second. Uh, pressed, this is as if you press the clutch pedal in. This is you releasing the clutch pedal, open circuit. Clutch pedal, uh, clutch pedal hasn't pressed down. There you go. So we have a switch that does work. We're good there. And we can also test the um, this the other switch uh, for the cruise control, which is another issue I have. You use the same technique. Oh my gosh, this is a little difficult. There you go. That's better. So open circuit, right? See that? So I'm gonna press it now. So now we have, uh, so we know we have this switch is also working. So open and pressed, okay? So that's how you bench test it. We're good, we know that both of these switches work, we just have an issue with like contact. The nice thing about this is that if you look right here, you can see that there are these are adjustable, All right? So I'm gonna really stick these, slide them in so that they can actually have more projected um, connection onto here, and that way they can um, they can open and close a little bit better. Now the uh, the thing about this is uh, this is what fails. This little rubber stopper here. Uh, see that? This thing gets brittle and breaks off. So I need to glue something onto the back of this pedal over here, at the top like this to help it push against that. And this is, a, it's like such an easy 
repair, but it's a pain in the butt to diagnose it if you're really new to uh, diagnostic work and you are trying to do stuff yourself. It just feels like it just happens out of nowhere. That might be your good, that might be your cue. It's gonna happen out of nowhere. Okay. See that right there, that little hole at the top? That is, there you go, that works. So right here, right, that hole there is where the stopper used to be. So I dug around in my hoard. So this combination here, this bolt and nut. So I'm gonna stick it inside of there and screw it down. That's the plan. I gotta cut some of it off, so. I also want to smoothen out the uh, top of this so it'll be a little bit more uh, less likely to catch and break off that top of that switch. So let's do that. So what that does allows for this just to be a smooth surface, nothing that get hooked on the side. You know. All right, so now we gotta cut this off. All right, so we have a 13 millimeter wrench in here. Just slip that onto the back side of that. Then we have a 10 millimeter in the front here. I probably could put some thread locker on this, but I don't know, I don't really think it's gonna come undone, you know? All right. Famous last words. Snuggity snug. Okay. All right. Better than factory. Yeah, that works. Very cool. All right, we're good to go. We should just be able to see nothing's bumping up. We're gonna. Um, I'm gonna just. Uh, Adjust these. This, especially this. This one's fine. Leave that one alone. Leave that alone. It's going to adjust this. So to adjust these, you just want to break them free. This is a 14 millimeter. Once that's free, just screw that down, and more of it will get closer to the actual pedal itself. Once you're in position, that should be enough. Let's go ahead and tighten it down. Oh, how I hate wrenches. They just strip everything. <sighs> Which is why I very rarely ever use them. And that's it. So now everything should touch. Yeah, you can double check. Yep, that does. Alright, we are good to go. Yep, so did you see? Right there. 
see that touches quite well. And, uh, it shouldn't be too much, shouldn't be too far down because you want the clutch to come back and not be engaged, you know. So that's it. That, that'll work. So I'm gonna spend some time putting this back together. You saw how we did, the, how we took it off with just those three bolts, and I'll bring you back where we can uh, test it. All right, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. I've got everything back in place. Not everything. The the clutch pedal. Right, let's see. Bingo. <laughs> like a boss. Let's see. Sinking the clutch down. Take a look at my foot. See if car's in neutral. Will not start. All right. Clutch down. Still in neutral. All right. We did it. Hey, finally. Listen. I'm so happy we really got to solve this problem. And we got, and we got to fix the cruise control. That was going to be a separate video. But... Just happened that this broke and then that was pretty obvious. All right, the real finish. Thank you so much for just cruising along with me on this journey. Hope it was useful for you. Um, it was fun hanging out with you doing this project. It was super easy. Thought it was a lot of fun. And uh, uh, the diagnostics is straightforward. Uh, what I would do if I were to say try this again from the top to as in a video to help you figure out how to do this I would suggest you check the battery with a and you can't do it with a multimeter you know because the battery can have like 12 point something volts 12.3 and that would be fine right but the issue is it's the cold cranking amps you can't measure that with a multimeter so you need to get a battery tester to actually test the battery or you can take it to uh, well, you probably wouldn't be able to move your car if it's a no crank situation, but either way, you get a, get a battery tester. It doesn't cost that much money, and besides, tools make you happy. So, that's what I would do. Check the battery first. Check the connections on the battery, all the negative and positive leads. Make sure they're not loose, because that will create um, a fair amount of resistance, and then you don't have enough power to get to actually crank things over but the reason why I didn't do that is because I, I can tell that all the accessories and windows and horn and everything they were functioning well so that was a, that was a dead giveaway that the um, the battery was fine other than that um, that's how I would actually start this diagnostic process but it's it's a pretty straightforward thing you know you have that uh, clutch switch uh, clutch position switch uh, and you also have that um, relay uh, starter cut relay so either of those two things are components that can fail and you have like strange things like the little tiny knob on the uh, on the on the actual you know the those things always fall off so I probably should have while I was down there dug out the other one for the uh, cruise control but you know, I didn't do it. But I know what to look for in the future. And uh, the uh, yeah, and once you isolate those components, I showed you how to test them. If they test okay, then you just move on to looking at the uh, wire and integrity in between. And uh, but in general, break the system in half if you if you can. You know, when you do that way, you know that it just minimizes how much you have to test. So, in other words, I would have had to test the ignition system here, which is, you know, not impossibly, not difficult, but it just means I have to pull apart. I have to pull unplug stuff, plug stuff in, check for continuity. It's just so much when I can just eliminate the system in half is what I did. I knew if I was getting power to that, um, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, relay that, that the starter cut relay that I knew that it was I didn't have to check anything in the ignition part and uh, also you have your car you know oh, wait. she like rides her rides her she's like this older woman <laughs> yeah, see this. she's so amazing 
Ah, oh, I missed it. Anyway. Can we get it? Yeah, we missed it. Yeah. She, uh, she rides her electric scooter. Something to be seen. It's gotta be like 80. It's the best thing ever. Uh, either way, right? Like I was saying, um, the, those components and are the parts that are they can fail and everything else is just like the starter you know uh, you can also start with the starter because the starter itself if it's failed it's failed right but what I was trying to say is if you know your car so like I know this car right and it just stopped working I knew immediately it had to be something pretty straightforward and simple you know because there was no like oh this feels like the starter is getting sluggish you know or anything like that even though stars can fail abruptly, but usually you can kind of tell if you know your car and you're perceptive. All right, so thanks again for hanging out. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video helped you. And uh, if there's any suggestions, comments below, and the comment section would be great to help everybody learn. All right, and uh, have a great day.